Hey everyone, Cav here. We're back for IAE Day 7 and it's Anvil Aerospace. Let's check it out. What's in the center room? Oh, the Carrack. What a fantastic ship. I love this ship. I really hope they fix the uh, getting stuck in doors issue. The first ship on the list is the Anvil Terrapin. This is a very cute little ship with VTOLs and it's designed as a scouting, tracking, radar ship. Uh, kind of a pattern Pathfinder to be one of the ship that scans and goes out and explores first. Eyeballing the weapons here, these look like size twos. The engines and landing gear on this really do look chunky and industrial. And the grim looking red light chair in the middle uh, kind of speaks to the state of use of this ship right now. Unfortunately, the scanner station hasn't been working since the ship came out, but I am excited to hear that we may have scanning gameplay soon. And this ship and the Drake Cutter Scout link up there will be the equivalent of your Battlestar Galactica Raptors doing that short range reconnaissance. Pilot seat is nothing special and view is kind of obstructed by struts. Anvil are best known for their military style ships. This is the Anvil Arrow, arguably the best light fighter in the game. A skilled pilot in the Arrow can pretty much take out any ship because of its superior maneuverability and handling an atmosphere. And the ugly stepchild ship of the Anvil lineup is the Anvil Gladiator. As far as I know, it doesn't do particularly well in the fighting meta. I think the Pisces is a great ship and the medical version is one of the most useful. It's a little bit faster than the standard Pisces and comes with a tier 3 medical bed to patch you up after a bunker run. It also typically has some drinks in the cabinet and various med pens to treat a variety of ailments. An unconscious patient can be treated at the standing medical station. The C8X is the most effective combat variant of the Pisces and it fell just short of an A tier starter ship. If you're interested in this and seeing some of the other starter ships, check out my video there. This cool looking ship uh, with its legs in kind of an unusual position. <laughs> is the Anvil Hawk. This is a dedicated bounty hunting ship with strange chicken legs. It has a large number of small caliber hardpoints and the tail is actually a bounty hunting pod. Although I know some Hawk owners are disappointed that you can no longer log off in there and use it as a bed. The Hawk also benefits from a powerful EMP, allowing you to disable your opponent. I have fond memories of this ship. Although I'm not a big fan of the paint job on it, this was the first ship that I ever ended up buying with AUEC. It's a two-seater heavy fighter, the pilot has two size fours, and the turret has four size threes. It has great straight line acceleration and reasonable maneuverability for a heavy fighter. As much as I love the Carrick, a video about it could end up taking an entire episode, so if you want me to do that, please comment below. Here we have the Hornet Room. The F7 ship, also known as the Hornet, is a dedicated medium fighter with a customizable center module and the ability to mount a weapon on the nose. This variant is called the Wildfire, but functionally the majority of the ships are the same. The exception to them all being the same is mostly due to the tracker which is designed as a reconnaissance ship with a radar dish on the top and bottom. In the center, we have the F7C and this is the base model. The Super Hornet comes with a nose mounted turret as standard, an extended cab and a turret on top for your second occupant. The F7A is the military version of the Hornet. This currently isn't available to civilians. However, I've heard a rumor that there might be an event on over Christmas which might allow a lucky few to get their hands on this exceptionally rare vehicle. If you're wondering why they'd want the military version over the civilian one, basically every weapon on this variant of the Hornet is increased by one size category. Finally, my favorite variant. This is the F7CS. I think the S stands for stealth, as it is a stealth variant of the Hornet. I don't just like it because of the matte black paint, but also it has a slightly faster acceleration and tricord than the other Hornets and can be kitted out with some of the military parts, if you know what you're doing. I'll share a link to that video in the top right corner if you want to put a little extra military sting in your Hornet. Okay, we're in the last hall and we start off with the Spartan. To me, the Spartan is the least interesting of the vehicles built on the Atlas platform. It's designed to ferry around a large amount of ground troops. It's effectively a military bus or APC. Now we have one of the largest Anvil ships currently in the game, 
This is the Anvil Valkyrie. This is a heavily armoured dropship, designed to deliver vehicles and troops to front lines. It has large powerful VTOLs and decent amount of internal space for many of the larger land vehicles in the game, and space for lots of troops. Lots and lots of troops. Then finally, we have the ship that broke the current fighter meta. The F-8C Lightning is the upgraded version of the Hornet. Even though this is classified as a civilian version of this ship, it still has an incredible amount of firepower. I've recently done a review of this ship, which I'll leave in the top right hand corner for your convenience. You see why I think the Spartan's boring? This is a much more exciting version of the Atlas platform. This is by far the most effective anti-air deterrent for large ships. Although I'm still looking forward to getting hands-on with the Storm anti-aircraft vehicle. Maybe this is now the second best anti-aircraft vehicle. And the last version of the Atlas platform that we have out at the moment is the Centurion. As well as the upgraded attrition on the front, it has four size four weapons on the rear. The combination of these two vehicles will really help a team control ground facilities. Although I'm not sure what's going on with the wheels of this thing. Here we have the Anvil Legionnaire. This is going to be a dedicated boarding vehicle and was covered in my All Ships 2024, meaning it's gonna be out within the next year. Link to the video in the top corner. This is the Anvil Liberator, a dedicated small aircraft carrier with three pads on top and more space inside for small fighters or ground vehicles when this comes to the game, I imagine it will be the best ship for shipping ships. As a racer, I'm really tempted by this ship. And this ship here is the Crucible. This ship is basically designed to be a garage, capable of having medium fighters on board, such as the Hornets, and being able to repair them in situ, or leaving the repair bed in place and using those repair arms to repair up to capital size ships. I imagine this will work in tandem with the Argo SRV we saw yesterday as part of a repair service and rescue squad. Let's check out the pledge store. On Robert Space Industries website, of course, we have all the ships that we saw, including the concept ships like the Crucible, the Legionnaire, and the Liberator. And much to my surprise, the F-8C Lightning, which I believed was a limited offer ship as part of their last event, but I guess it's not so limited after all. And the Warbond Daily Deal is the Carrick, which will save you 40 US dollars off the base price. What's your favorite Anvil ship? And which ships, if any, will you be renting this year? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks everyone, bye bye. And the ugly stepchild. I can't believe I'm going to say that. And the ugly stepchild. I've got, I've got to sell it. I've got to meet, like say it like I mean it. And the ugly stepchild. And the ugly stepchild's ship of the ugly stepchild ship on Reddit.